Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shivat Nankamani, an Integration Technical Architect. In one of my previous videos, I have published the techniques on how to cache. In general, while you are calling the database, uh, uh, I have explained the mechanism of uh, generic uh, caching mechanism. But many viewers requested me to uh, publish a video on how to cache the web service and web service response while invoking a third party web service. So I thought I can uh, publish a separate video on explaining uh, how to apply this caching technique while invoking the external web service. Let's get started. In this video, we will be talking about the four important topics. Uh, the first one is we will we are going to see how we need to hash the incoming payload. There is a difference between hashing and caching. So uh, the first step is to hash the incoming payload to create a unique ID. The second one is we are going to actually invoke the SOAP or REST service uh, uh, that uh, demonstrates how to invoke the third party service. The third one we are going to see the technique of uh, how to cache this web service response. And finally we are going to measure the benefit of caching. So we are going to basically do before and after the caching and then see how much performance we are able to get by applying the caching mechanism. I have a flow created in Mule 4 uh, that applied already the caching. So we are going to walk through one by one and the steps involved in uh, caching this web service invocation. So I have a HTTP listener and uh, uh, which involves in calling the web service. So I have taken a, a W3 schools uh, temperature conversion web service, which is basically a, a, a Vistel based SOAP service. But for simplicity, I'm going to invoke that SOAP service as a REST service. I mean, like uh, either it is SOAP or REST, basically they are all HTTP services. So uh, I'm calling it by means of uh, HTTP service, you can see here. So I have configured this HTTP with the uh, with the URL HTTPS uh, w3schools.com slash XML slash tempconvert.asmx. This is a free web service. You, you can uh, use it for your own uh, demo purposes. And uh, so this is the path. Let me show you the configuration. So this is a simple configuration listening on uh, um, because uh, this web service is listening on uh, port 443. So it's a simple uh, invocation. So first let's see uh, how to configure the uh, caching and uh, the details uh, behind caching. So the idea behind uh, uh, web service caching is uh, uh, when we invoke this web service first time it actually invokes the third party web service and uh, takes the response and then pass it back. When second or third consecutive time when uh, on a quick interval when the external uh, party is calling this uh, API. We don't need to call second time or third time because we have already called. So we can leverage the previous call by uh, storing the response of the previous call in terms of uh, uh, object store. And then we can configure in such a way that for the consecutive times, uh, uh, it can take it from the cache and then uh, give the response quickly. So that's the idea behind uh, uh, caching the web service response. So in order to cache, you need a place where, you, where the MuleSoft can store these uh, information in terms of key value pairs. So for that you need object store. Let's see how to configure that. So you have to give the name. And uh, as I said, you need one object store for one for every kind of data that you want to store. So uh, this is a store and we have uh, uh, some important entries. You need to check this uh, object store as persistent because it's going to keep the data in disk uh, so that it can survive uh, a system restart. So that's the idea of uh, caching. So even if the um, application is restarted, when we redeploy, it will still be available in the memory. So uh, there are a few entries in the configuration. Let's see uh, what they are. First one is max entries. So it's simply the number of entries that you want to store it in uh, cache because you don't want it, this to go unlimited like millions. Because that will, uh, in MuleSoft, uh, when you go for uh, a Cloud Hub model, you the memory is restricted uh, for vCore size because it's licensed that way. So you need to uh, make sure that you are storing only necessary amount of uh, entries and not uh, uh, caching uh, millions of records. 
so uh, it's in, in an ideal scenario it will be a, a good to have uh, 100 to 1000 entries uh, so uh, when it goes beyond uh, it will get discarded uh, so that's the idea of uh, max entries the next is uh, entry ttl so it's a time to live so uh, you need to decide how long uh, the key value pair entry can reside in the object store before it gets discarded so you can decide like uh, uh, an r or 2 would be the best fit uh, for uh, maintaining this time to live but for simplicity i have given one minute but uh, you don't want to cache it for one minute it's useless so you can give like uh, uh, one hour or two hours max you can give uh, one day so that will be still uh, sufficient so you can decide that uh, ttl accordingly and then expiration interval also you can give uh, which can almost be same as entry ttl so expiration interval is when a mule performs uh, a searching of these entries that exceeded the time to live so it's kind of a, a housekeeping mechanism that it runs and clears the entries that exceeded the time to live so these are these configurations are uh, simple then you need to go for actual uh, caching strategy on uh, based on what you want to cache uh, so uh, you have to give the name and then you have to give the uh, key expression uh, that is used uh, uh, or that serves as a key to store the payload so i'll explain how this uh, uh, key can be formed so this is simply an identifier uh, into which uh, uh, the cache value can be taken when we attempt it for the consecutive times so normally you need to choose a key expression uh, that has a unique value for example if the payload contains any identifier like order id uh, uh, student ID etc then you can use that as a key expression now let's see how this cached data are maintained internally by MuleSoft so it's very simple it's maintaining uh, in terms of key value pairs key is the one that we choose and we need to decide based on either uh, based on the incoming payload or by some means uh, how we can uh, take the value back uh, when the second time or third time the request is uh, sent back so basically this key is uh, better to form by one of the values that's coming from the input payload or sometimes uh, now in this video we are going to see how to cache uh, uh, how to form the key based on the entire input payload so I'll, I'll be explaining that in a minute and uh, the value will be the web service response here so we are retrieving the web service response and we cache it before we respond so that uh, for the consecutive attempts if the key value is already available it will be taking from this uh, uh, cached data and then send it back so this is how the internal caching mechanism works so the next important step is how to form the key so that's what we are going to see so um, uh, ideally suppose if you are retrieving the employee data employee id can be used as a key value uh, so uh, normally when we read the employee data with the help of employee id it will be read once either from the database or from somewhere and the second time uh, when we want to retrieve the same employee id it can come from the caching so uh, now we are going to do the entire payload because sometimes uh, it it might not be uh, necessarily just one key field it will be the combination of multiple key fields so sometimes it's better to take the entire payload without uh, worrying about uh, combining multiple fields that might lead to null pointer exception etc so let's take the entire payload for uh, a better safety and then uh, arrive at the uh, hash so i'm 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 often using the word hash hashing means the entire payload or xml or json can be converted into one single token so that we can use it as a key so i have a, a simple data wave a data weave that contains a, a crypto so by using crypto uh, you can convert the entire payload see i have given the entire payload in terms of raw text as a string and then converting into binary and then by using crypto we are uh, uh, arriving at the token so uh, the, the entire xml will be uh, hashed 
in terms of a token. So we find the token and then we are uh, storing it as an input payload hash. So input payload hash will be used as a variable for the caching to serve as a key. So that's what we mentioned because we have stored it in a variable called input payload hash. If you look at this, the caching strategy, it will be used uh, only the input payload hash that we are arriving at will be used as a key expression. So that's uh, something very important to note. So uh, that's it. And uh, uh, caching mechanism itself as such is very easy. You need to uh, drag this uh, uh, cache scope, drag and drop, and then put the web service invocation inside the cache scope. And then I have a log that says no existing hash found invoking the web service. This logger can serve as an evidence that it's reading from the web service. So when we run it, when we don't get this particular logger, it means that it will be coming from the uh, cache and not from the external web service. So that's it. And uh, let us run this. And I have already uh, made it application up and running. So I'm using this uh, uh, Postman tool. This is the uh, this is the service URL that's currently running now. So uh, we are going to convert that uh, temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So Celsius value is given in this uh, XML format, and this is a response. So um, let's uh, run this. So we are getting the Fahrenheit equivalent of this, and then let's see what's happening in the log. So in the log, you can see two things which I have uh, logged. One is the token, which is the hash value of the entire XML payload. And uh, the logger that says uh, no existing uh, hash found, so invoking the web service. So now it's invoking and since we are invoking it for the first time. So now let's go back and then see, uh, see it's, uh, it, took 776 milliseconds the first time, 19 milliseconds. Let's see how the uh, cache works in the from the logs. So it's read for the first time and for the second consecutive time, second time and third time, it's, uh, it's only indicating the token. You can see here uh, uh, the token being the same when we invoke uh, second time and third time. So now we are going to make a minor change here. So we are going to say the uh, Celsius is 100 this time and not 45. And let's see what happens. Now you can see it's taking more than uh, one second. And now you should see the logs that it says invoking the web service. And uh, this time um, the hash value is different because we made changes in the payload. So now let's see um, 600 and run it. And now again it's reading from the web service and the token being different. Now let's uh, undo this and then give the previous request. This time it should take from the uh, cached data. It's coming so quickly within uh, 14 milliseconds. So far, we have seen the demo and the techniques of how to apply caching while calling the web service. So now let's see when to use such caching. So caching should not be done for all web service invocation and it should have some purpose. So there are some five uh, common purposes where uh, we prefer to use caching. So the first one is when cost involved in web service. So uh, when there is a cost involved, uh, when there is a scenario where uh, uh, there is a possibility for the same request uh, to come uh, multiple times with the same uh, payload. Uh, so at that time you can use uh, uh, caching so that you can avoid uh, uh, giving excessive cost uh, while while number of uh, calls to the web service matters. So normally when, when we invoke this licensed web service, uh, we can use this caching so that uh, number of calls can be limited. Next one, obviously, to improve the performance. So some, sometimes some web, web services uh, might take four or five seconds to respond. So you can leverage it uh, in caching so that uh, if the same request comes again, 
uh, you can um, do it better. This in particular uh, can be used to retrieve the rates uh, for the repeatedly selling uh, products in the website, in the e-commerce site. And the third one is uh, when we have a strict SLA compliance, uh, you want to uh, respond it quickly or respond it within a, uh, a specific period of time, then you can, uh, you can use this uh, caching. Then number four, high rate of web service outage. Sometimes this web service might go intermittently. So at that time you can uh, leverage taking it from the caching. Um, but uh, of course, when you want to have up-to-date information, uh, then you should not use caching because sometimes uh, uh, you will be using this weather forecast uh, web service where the in such places where the weather might change uh, within half an hour uh, drastically. So at that time you should use uh, uh, real-time calling rather than caching so you need to take care of that aspect and finally this is the most suitable for get operations and this must not be used for any transaction related uh, operations so it's best suited for read-only operation like reading the employees data uh, for example why I'm giving this example is employee data doesn't often get changed it rarely changes so in such cases uh, you can use it for example in the e-commerce site you can read the uh, rate of the product uh, um, by from caching because uh, rate of the product normally doesn't change on an hourly basis because it might change uh, once a day so it's better to cache uh, uh, product related master data uh, maybe for a day that's it in this video hope you liked uh, the caching mechanism and you can apply in your own real-time projects and let me know how it works. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe my videos. Soon I will come up with more interesting and useful topics. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.